survey results are in and what the university is planning to do with the data. Hear what students have to say about SLO's public transit system. Find out why a student is taking to the trash to find her groceries. Broadcasting from Swanson Studios, you're watching Mustang News. Hello and welcome to Mustang News. I'm Sydney Melton. And I'm Leanna Newby. Here are this week's top stories. Cal Poly released the results of the Cal Poly Experience, or CPX, survey on Thursday. Individuals from all demographic groups responded that the campus climate could be better. The data showed that many minority individuals have a negative experience on campus and do not feel a sense of community. The research also found it is most difficult for black students to feel a strong sense of belonging. And the thing that I say is that those challenges that have elevated yet again and diversity flashpoint challenges that have been in the backwash of this great university, they are shared challenges that many institutions across the country are experiencing. The results reflect responses from nearly 11,000 students, faculty, and staff. The university's ultimate goal is to develop a five-year plan to address the recommendations given by Williams. October is Sustainability Month, and we wanted to check in with students taking advantage of alternative forms of transportation, like slow transit. The experience has definitely been uh, Thursdays during Farmer's Market when the bus is so packed they just drive by and don't take any more students because they're just too full, and you don't know when the next bus is going to come for that. The bus came one time, and I had a class, and uh, the bus driver like squished as many people as they could, but they left person behind and it was me so that was I was unfortunate so missed my class because of that my worst memory on the bus is when it, I had class in like 10 minutes and the bus didn't let me on um, and I had to like get a ride from someone yeah I have missed the bus um, because it did skip me um, but then the Highland Tripper came right afterwards so that was really nice but yeah there have been times where it's full and the bus drivers like Sorry. <laughs> and while the bus does have its minor drawbacks, students expressed how much they liked and appreciated Slow's public transit system. I love the bus. It's very useful. I like public transport. I use the bus every day, but it's really good. The bus is like really nice. It's really great. It gets me to where I need to be on time. Um, I love the Highland Tripper because it like it's so perfect and it picks up everyone. So that like can't get the bus and that might miss the bus in the morning. Um, so I really like it. It's been a great experience. Bus stops can be found at the Kennedy Library and the Performing Arts Center on campus. For more information, check out slowcity.org. One Cal Poly student is taking living sustainability to the next level. Maya McGregor dives into the details of Jamie Himmler's quest for sustainability. Campus Sustainability Month is in full swing. But for environmental protection and management senior, Jamie Himmler, living sustainably is an everyday practice. Himmler's quest for a sustainable lifestyle goes beyond shopping at farmer's markets and reducing plastic waste. Since high school, Himmler has been dumpster diving for makeup, clothes, and more recently, her groceries. It's like going to the grocery store, but it's just all in the, in the trash. When Himmler came to Cal Poly, her interest in dumpster diving peaked after learning that over 40% of food in America goes to waste. We al almost felt like it was a duty of ours to dumpster dive. <laughs> As a junior, Himmler helped start Feel Alive, an organization with the goal of solving the issue of local food waste. Feel Alive repurposes food waste by selling products created entirely by ingredients found in dumpsters. Well, it's really about getting behind a mission that's way greater than yourself. Along with dumpster diving, Himmler strives for a sustainable lifestyle by biking to school, limiting food packaging, and reusing jars as water bottles and containers. What I've discovered is that for the most part, things that are sustainable, like sustainable practices, are also healthy practices. Like they really go hand in hand. For Mustang News, I'm Maya McGregor. Campus Sustainability Month continues this Thursday with a Patagonia film screening in UU 220 at 11 a.m. It's starting to get hot out there. Rachel, what can we expect for weather this week? So actually, San Luis Obispo is under a heat advisory warning. I'll have more information about that and your weather coming up after the break. Titans, go! When the 
Teen Titans go to the movies. They know the best way to travel is safely. To keep your child safe, be sure to use the right car seat for their age and size. Exactly. Hollywood, here we come! The Adam has arrived! Have a seat, my dude. For more information on finding the right seat, visit NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Impressive. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Leah, did you put a new dent in that? This one? No. Were you texting and driving again? Yes. Hi, Leah. Hi, Dad. Sorry about your bumper. <laughs> Eva Marie smoked 12,000 packs of cigarettes over 15 years. She quit. And now there's a new lung cancer screening that could save her life. You stop smoking, now start screening. No matter how much you smoked, early detection could save you. Talk to your doctor or learn more at savedbythescan.org. Hey guys, it's Rachel Markwart here with your weather forecast for today and leading into the week for MNTV. Let's start out with our weather today. Boy, it is hot. It is 94 degrees is the high out there today. It's actually on heat advisory warning all until the afternoon, but we're gonna have a nice cool a night tonight. You know, light sweaters, not too bad. 62 degrees for our weather tonight. It's gonna be sunny all today with 80% humidity winds around 10 to 15 miles per hour. Um, let's go to the beaches because why not go to the beach on this beautiful hot day? Up from Cayucos and Morro Bay and Avila Beach, it's gonna get a little bit hotter, about 86, 87, 85 degrees. It's gonna dip a little bit cooler down into Oceano um, at about 85 degrees. You're gonna have about 60 degrees all around um, for your nighttime beach weather. Um, let's go into North County today. Up from Paso Robles, Creston, Atascadero, all the way down to Santa Margarita, it's gonna be about 90 90 degrees being your high and about 50 for your low. Um, but San Luis Obispo, again, is the hottest in North County for um, today. 94 degrees, like I said, we're on heat advisory warning. Try to stay inside, make sure to stay hydrated, guys. Um, South County and extended all around here, it's gonna be about mid to high 80s. It's gonna get up into our 90s around Orcutt here and down into Vandenberg, it's gonna be a solid 90. Again, our evenings is gonna be from uh, mid to low 50s. Um, now into our five day forecast today. Again, Tuesday for San Luis Obispo is gonna be our hottest day of the week. Um, hottest day of the week. And so it's gonna be 94 degrees um, for our hottest day and then 62 again for our low. But as you can see up until Wednesday and all the way down until Saturday, it's gonna dip a little bit. It's gonna be really nice. It's gonna go from 88, a little bit higher on Thursday to 89, up until 91 on Friday, but then it's gonna dip down really nicely into Saturday at 86 degrees. Still feels pretty hot for us in San Luis Obispo, but a lot better than today. Our evenings are gonna be around um, between 50 and 60 degrees. Um, again, our nice evening, um, our nice evening today on Tuesday um, is gonna be about 62, but it's gonna get all the way down to 50 on Saturday. So that's the weather we have for today. Now on to Emma with sports. Cal Poly men's soccer sophomore goalkeeper, Carlos Arce Hurtado, made six saves to earn his first shutout win on Sunday. We have more on his journey to the starting role for the Mustangs. Carlos has been playing truly exceptional soccer. Some of his reaction saves have been spectacular. It's stopped there by Arce Hurtado. One of the most impressive things about Carlos is that he, he literally would drive from and cross the border of Mexico from Tijuana and, and, and train in La Jolla five, six days out of the week. My friends pick me up at the border then just drop me off and I walk to my home. I believe that it shaped me on my values of, of be a hard worker. I believe that no one gave me anything when I was growing up. I was like getting it for myself. Like it was for myself and I had to, to work to get the stuff I wanted to. I really believe that we're only seeing the tip of the iceberg with him. If he continues to grow at, at, at the pace that he is right now, I, I think he could literally become one of the best goalkeepers in the country. The team plays at Sacramento State Wednesday at 3 p.m. And that's what we have for sports. Now back to Leanna and Sydney.
Stay tuned after the break to see a sneak peek into Cal Poly's Rose Float transition. Steel wire. Of course. Love is like the ocean. You have to tread the Oh, waters. Dad, that's not the kind of help I needed. Hey, Jessica. I, um, will you go to prom with me? Yes. <laughs> you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care can't wait to share their first with you. I'm Maria, this is how it's work. It was fourth period biology. Our students just weren't getting how easily viruses spread. So Ms. Bell and I had them role play a zombie virus outbreak. By the time they had all learned the lesson, all the living were dead. Hey, how's your job going? That big sales meeting I planned? Next year, I might get to go. <clears throat> cool. Steel, wire, hydraulics, and eventually flowers will be used at the second phase of Cal Poly's 2072nd Rose Float. Reporter Felix Castillo has more on this process. Cal Poly students are diving in for the upcoming New Year's 2020 Tournament of Roses. In between classes and on weekends, students have been prepping this year's float, which is being transported to Cal Poly's sister Pomona campus, this year's theme aquatic aspirations. There's a lot of collaboration that needs to happen when we're putting the two halves together. Basically what we're doing today is putting our half of the chassis onto a semi-truck, shipping it down to Pomona so that we can put the two halves together and complete the float. The chassis is the foundation of the float. It takes two operators, one driving the float, while the second controls the float's hydraulic animated parts. Every year, students and volunteers construct required welded steel and wired frames. Our float is going to uh, feature a submarine that is basically discovering undersea life. This New Year's Eve will mark Cal Poly's 72nd appearance at the 131st Tournament of Roses in Pasadena, California. From this week forward, San Luis Obispo students will be driving the approximately four-hour trip down to the Pomona University on the weekends and during the winter break to work on the completion of the float. For more information, visit the ASI Cal Poly's webpage and click on Cal Poly Rose Float to sign up for Deco Week. I am Felix Castillo with Mustang News. Volunteers are welcome for Deco Week. Find more information at ASI Cal Poly website and clicking on the Cal Poly Rose Float. This unique club on campus is growing their own food. What better way to be sustainable than to grow your own food? Cal Poly's Garden Club is raising their very own herbs and produce. Third year civil engineering major Cameron Lilly is the president and founder of Garden Club. He and others have taken it upon themselves to grow food organically. I mean, this is a beautiful place. It's a really cool opportunity and we have, it's all student run. Like we have done everything here by the students for the students. So I think it's a really cool opportunity to get involved in. And, um, Students meet every Sunday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Student Experimental Farm. Each week, the, they water and tend to their plants in hopes of one day yielding viable crops for cooking and eating. This week is National Transfer Student Week. Cal Poly Academic Advising is hosting events from today until October 25th to celebrate new and continuing transfer students. Interested students can attend an ice cream social on Wednesday, a career workshop on Thursday, or a mixer with the Cal Poly Association of Transfer Students on Friday. For more information, check out advising.calpoly.edu. That's all we have for you today. For full campus coverage, go to mustangnews.net. I'm Sydney Melton. And I'm Leanna Newby. Have a great week.